In this video, we're going to be looking at trigonometric graphs, in particular how you sketch y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x. Uh, we're not going to look at y equals tan of x in this particular video because it's not in the GCC syllabus. We're also not going to see how you can use these graphs to solve trigonometric equations. We'll look at that in another video. Now, I've, for convenience, I've worked out sine of 30. Put, you can put that into a calculator. You do sine of 30, sine of 45, etc. And the same for cods. And there's a separate video where I cover how you can work out these exact trigonometric values. Now on my axis I've put some values here. When you're drawing a sine graph always do multiples of 90 up to 360. So 90, 180, 270 and 360. And we'll find that the graph then repeats after we get to uh, 360. And it's also worth noting that for both sine and cos the y values go between minus 1 and 1. So let's plot some of these values. When you do sine of 30, if x was 30, then y would be half. Sine of 30 is half. So when you've got 30 here, 0.5 is there, isn't it? So let's plot that, it's a little dot. Sine of 45, so when x is 45, we get one over root two. And if you do that in a calculator, uh, it's roughly 0.7. So 45, that's 45 on the x-axis, 0.7 roughly here. And then finally, sine of 60, so when x is 60, you get root 3 over 2. If you do root 3 over 2 on a calculator, it is, well, let's just see, because I've forgotten. So to one decimal place, it's 0.9. So um, 60, 0.9, so it's close to 1 here. And what you'll find, if we sketch it now, it has this lovely curve shape. By the time it gets to 90, it's 1. And then it loops back down like this. And then by 270, it goes to minus 1. And then by 360, it comes back round. And then if you need to continue this graph further, it would just repeat again. So it does a loop, and then another loop, another wave, and then another wave, etc. Now you might be wondering, OK, we know how to find sine of 30, 45, 60, but how do we find sine of 90, sine of 0? Because we can't really construct um, right angle triangles with these particular angles beyond 90. How can you have um, sine of 120? Because you can't construct a right angle triangle with a, an angle of 120 in it, can you? Um, and we'll look at that later. Uh, it's not in the GCC syllabus, so you don't need to worry about it, but I will explore it. It's something called the unit circle that we can use to work out um, sine of values and cos of values beyond 90 degrees. What you need to know for the GCC syllabus is the key points on this graph. So you need to know that the sine graph goes through 0, 0, the origin. You need to know that when you get to 90, it's gone up to 1, so this coordinate is 90, 1. What's this coordinate here? It is 180, 0. What's this coordinate here? It's dropped down to minus 1, so that's 270 minus 1. And what's this coordinate here? It is 360, 0. So the key thing you need to remember are these key points. You need to know that if you think about multiples of 90, 90, 180, 270, 360, by 90 it's gone up to 1, then another 90 it's gone back down to 0, by 270 it's gone down to this, and it's gone down to this. So an exam question, they might say, what is the coordinate of that point? And you have to work out the coordinate, given your knowledge of the sine graph. Let's do the same for cos. So I'm going to do, again, always multiples of 90, 180, 270, 360. And again, the cos graph goes between minus 1 and 1. So let's just use the values we've got. Uh, cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. That was roughly 0.9, wasn't it? So cos of 30, 30 is roughly here. Cos of 30 gives a y value of 0.9. We've got cos of 45, x value of 45 here. There's 1 over root 2. If you put it on the calculator, it was 0.7-ish. So about here. And then cos of 60 was half. So dropping down to half here. And then basically you can sort of see what the shape is going to do. It's going, if I follow these points, it drops down to 90. And you might be able to guess what happens here. It then by 180, it drops down to minus 1. And then it comes back up to 0 again by 270. And then another 90 along it goes back up to 1 again, and again it repeats. So it does this wave here, and then if you were to go on to uh, 90 degrees later, it would drop back, back down to 0, etc. And the negative direction as well, so it's an infinitely long wave. And again, the coordinates are key. So this is the point with coordinates 0, 1. This has coordinates where the x value is 90, the y value is 0. Here, the coordinates is 180 minus 1. 
Here the coordinate is 270.0, and here the coordinate is 361. Now this part of the video is just for your mathematical curiosity, but how do we find sine of values or cos of values beyond 90 degrees? If we had, say, a no sine of 67, we could construct an appropriate right angle triangle uh, and use Sokotoa to work out uh, what sine of 67 is. The problem is, is that such a triangle couldn't have angles of more than 90 degrees. You can't have an angle of 180 degrees in a triangle, can you? You can't have an angle of 270 degrees. So we need some other approach to work out sine of 270. And the way we do it is using something called a unit circle. Now the word unit just means one. So we want a circle of radius one and it's going to be centered at the origin. Now let's consider just a point xy, some arbitrary point xy on this circle. And we've got an angle theta which is the anti-clockwise rotation from the positive x-axis. So it's this anti-clockwise angle rotation here. Now is there a way we can actually work out this coordinate just in terms of theta? And yes we can. We can use some trigonometry. So if I construct a right angle triangle, what's this hypotenuse here? Well it's one isn't it? Because it's the radius of the circle. The radius is one. And that is the hypotenuse. I'm going to put a little h there. Now this length here, what is it? Well it's the y value isn't it? The y value is that distance there to get from zero up to the y value of y. So that's y, and that is opposite this particular angle. So let's put a little o. And then finally, this distance here, well that x value is x, if the x is there, that distance is x. And that is the adjacent to that particular angle. Now if we use a bit of uh, trigonometry using Sokotoa, we can find that sine of the angle of theta is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 1, just using Sokotoa. But the thing is, y over 1 is just y. So we've got sine of theta is y. And similarly, cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's x over 1, which is just x. And that means this coordinate here is well, the x value we said was cos of theta, so it was cos of theta, and the y value, y, was sine of theta. So the coordinate of some point with an angle rotation of theta on the unit circle is cos theta, sine theta. That's the coordinates. Now we can use that to find um, cos and sine of values like 0, 90, 180. So let's do it. Now, if the angle was theta was 0, then basically this line, this point has no rotation at all about the circle, it's just on the x-axis. So if we draw that, this is where feet is zero. And basically on this unit circle, if feet is zero, it's just that point there. Yep. Now what is the coordinate of that point? Well that's one, zero, isn't it? So we can see from this, if that's cos of theta and that's sine of theta, we've got cos of zero, is equal to 1, and we've got sine of 0 is equal to 0, yeah? So sine of 0 is 0, and that's why we know we've got this point here, sine of 0 is 0. What about sine of 90? Well, we consider when feet is 90, if we look at where the point is on the unit circle, well, if we rotate an angle 90 degrees anti-clockwise, we get to this point here, so it's here. So can we see that coordinate there, because it's a unit circle, the radius is 1, so that has coordinates 0, 1. So we compare that again to cos of theta, sine of theta, we've got cos of 0, sine of 0, because theta is, oh no, sorry, it's 90. Cos of 90, sine of 90, and so we can see therefore that cos of 90 is 0 and sine of 90 is 1. So we can see sine of 90 is equal to 1, and we can put our point there. And what about 180? So if we do the same with 180, so the angle of rotation this time is 180, so it's going to be all the way around here on our unit circle. So what's this coordinate now? Well, it's minus 1, 0. Now if we compare that to cos theta sine theta, that means we've got cos of 180 sine of 180. So that means that cos of 180 is minus 1 and sine of 180 is 0.
So sine of 180, the y value is zero. Let's do 270. You can see where this is going. Theta's 270. Draw the unit circle again. And an angle rotation anticlockwise 270. That's 270. We end up down here. And that has coordinates 0, minus 1. Now if we compare that to cos theta, sine theta, where theta is 270. We have cos of 270, sine of 270. So we can see, therefore, that sine of 270 is 0. Sorry, cos of 270 is 0, and sine of 270 is minus 1. So sine of 270 is minus 1. So I have a sine graph here. And then finally, 360. Well, we can see it's an angle rotation of 360. It's going to rotate all the way back, and we get to this point again. So it's got to be the same as 0, because we've got back to our starting point, haven't we? And that also explains why you can find sine of angles beyond 360, say, uh, like 720, for example, because we can still consider a rotation of more than 360 degrees, can't we? And you can see, just joining these dots here, we can see, we could do it for other points between 90 and 180, but exactly the same kind of principle. And we can see that's why we get this graph beyond 90 degrees.